The MiG-23 is the most recent and the most capable single-engine fighter class developed in Russia, and following its service entry in 1970 the aircraft and its derivatives remained in production for the next 25 years. While initially a troubled fighter which still relied on avionics similar to those of its predecessor the MiG-21, by the late 1970s the MiG-23 had evolved into a highly potent fighter class of which over 2,000 were fielded by the Soviet armed forces alone. Earlier, according to information published by the Russian media Kherson News on April 2, 2024, Russia is set to relaunch its military aviation capabilities with the development of a new fighter aircraft based on the iconic MiG-23 and MiG-27 aircraft. The decision comes in response to the operational insights gained from recent military engagements in Ukraine, underscoring the significant impact of high-precision weaponry on the battlefield. The initiative aims to increase and boost the Russian aerospace forces with a mass-produced, easily manufactured fighter aircraft capable of deploying an increased volume of armaments. The military operations experiences in Ukraine highlighted the critical role of high-precision weapons in advancing the front line. Thus, there's a pressing need for a fighter jet that combines ease of production with the capability to carry a substantial arsenal, citing Kherson News information. Efforts to develop this new fighter, drawing inspiration from the Soviet-era MiG-23 and its derivative, the MiG-27, are reportedly in progress. The project seeks to blend the formidable legacy of these aircraft with contemporary systems and armaments, addressing modern warfare requirements. We're leveraging the proven design of our Soviet fighters, the MiG-23 and MiG-27, infusing them with modern technology and weaponry. This venture is about crafting a novel aircraft that pays homage to its predecessors while being fully equipped for contemporary combat scenarios, said a member of the Russian defense industry. Even though this information surfaced near April 1, it remains credible. It's important to note that the Russian army is utilizing T-54s and BTR-50s, which trace their origins back to the Second World War. Additionally, they are in the process of modernizing T-62s, preparing to deploy BTR-90 prototypes, restarting production of Tu-22 supersonic bombers, and planning to reintroduce into service an Antonov and 124 Ruslan aircraft that has been exposed to the elements for 25 years. Introduced in 1969, the MiG-23, designed by the mikoyan gurevich Design Bureau, represented an advancement in Soviet military aviation compared to its predecessor, the MiG-21. It featured improved avionics, better weapon systems for beyond visual range engagement, and variable geometry wings for enhanced takeoff and landing performance. Influenced by Western aircraft design, such as the General Dynamics F-111 and McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom II, the MiG-23 was a single-engine fighter capable of high maneuverability for dogfights, meeting the requirements of the Soviet Air Force. Its armament varied across models, supporting both air-to-air -air and ground attack missions with a range of missiles and bombs and its 23mm cannon. With top speeds reaching up to Mach 2.35, the MiG-23 showcased high-performance capabilities. Despite not being designed for nuclear weapon delivery, its versatility in various missions made it useful in conflicts like the Iran-Iraq War, the Gulf War, and the Libyan Civil War. The MiG-27, derived from the MiG-23, was a ground attack aircraft introduced in 1975. It served primarily in Soviet and Warsaw Pact countries' air forces, replacing older models like the MiG-23B, BN and Suhoi Su-7. The MiG-27 featured improvements such as better visibility from the cockpit, armor protection, and a redesigned nose. Its armament included a more powerful 30mm cannon, reflecting its focus on air-to-ground missions.
Despite facing challenges like recoil from its six-barrel 30mm GSH-6-30 cannon, the MiG-27 proved reliable for low-level strike missions, although its deployment was limited by the threat from manpads, manned portable air defense systems, in theaters such as Afghanistan. Whether true or false, modernizing the MiG-23 and MiG-27 to contemporary standards would involve several key upgrades across various subsystems, focusing on enhancing combat capabilities, survivability, and performance. Based on the historical upgrades and variants of these aircraft, a comprehensive modernization program could include subsystems like avionics, armament, propulsion, electronic warfare, structural modifications, and maintenance protocols. Adapting the MiG-23 and MiG-27 armament system to include a wider array of munitions, including modern air-to-air -air and air-to-ground weapons, precision-guided munitions, and eventually tactical nuclear weapons would significantly increase the aircraft's firepower especially if these aircraft are modified to receive a more modern autocannon. For example, integrating laser-guided bombs and standoff-range missiles would enable the aircraft to engage targets with greater accuracy. As seen in the MiG-23MLD variant, integrating or updating electronic warfare systems and countermeasure systems, such as chaff and flare dispensers, would be essential to improve the aircraft's survivability in contested airspace like Ukraine. Possible options could include systems similar to the BVP-5060 flare dispensers, for defense against radar and infrared guided missile threats, or advanced electronic countermeasures ECM, suite to jam enemy radar and missile systems. Compared to the Su-34 and Su-57, these modernized MiG-23 and MiG-27 will probably simplify maintenance procedures with a modular design and introduce lifecycle management solutions for cost-effective operation and support. This also includes the development and incorporation of dedicated flight simulators and training programs to prepare pilots to make optimum use of all the implemented upgrades.